الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم ما بعد أيها الحبة في الله May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us and bless you and bless us in this holy month of Ramadan and accept our fasting and accept our charity and accept our uh, reading of the Quran and all of our forms of ibadah and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us from kulisu wa makru ameen ya rabbil alameen Listen to this hadith of Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha and then we'll talk about some of the masail and this is relevant for those people who struggle with issues of of looking at the muharramat during Ramadan or people who ha are married and this involves kissing or massaging their spouse akramakum Allah or uh, a variety of issues so we need to know what happens what what if I look at someone I uh, look at a, at a female and I'm uh, continually gazing at her until Akramakum Allah uh, I prematurely ejaculate or something this affair what is the hukum? because these are real messiah and this is what the fuqaha talked about in Allah la, yas, la yastahi min al haq Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, is not shy regarding the truth عن عائشة عن عائشة رضي الله تعالى عنها قالت كان رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم يقبل وهو صائم ويبشر وهو صائم ولكنه أملككم لإربه متفق عليه. In this hadith uh, of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم the hadith of Aisha رضي الله تعالى عنها who said that the Messenger of Allah وسلم, used to kiss uh, while he was fasting. And he used to uh, touch while he was fasting, you know. Uh, however, he was the most in control of himself. You know, the, the most uh, person who was in control of his desires. And this is in Bukhari and Muslim. In this hadith, Ahabat Tifillah, there's many Masail that arise. So we're going to try to get right down to business and see if we can benefit and look at some of the different aqwal of Ahl al just to get a, an, an idea of these masail almiya that this is the beauty of fiqh is getting into these issues or the beauty of fiqh is practicing it of course but for the person who is maybe a student of knowledge or who wants to uh, increase their knowledge that they like to get into some of these issues just to get a broader understanding, a broader picture to, to reach, to strengthen what he or she believes. So let's get into some of these issues and see if it can give us clarity and we'll try to bring about the Qul al-Rajih to the best of our ability according to the aqwal of the ulama. According to the statements of the ulama, we'll try to give you things that you can practice. One of the issues that arises is a habit of Allah, the hukum al-qubla the ruling regarding kissing and massaging or what have you when a person is fasting. From the apparent meaning of this hadith, we see a habit of Allah that is permissible to kiss and uh, to massage, so to speak, uh, for the person fasting. Uh, during the Ram month of Ramadan and other than the month of Ramadan. And this is uh, one of the aqwal of some of the ulama and the zahir of the hadith. The hadith uh, gives us strong evidence for this. And with regards to this, they also, those who support this or have this view, they also use the ayat where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Kitab al Karim. Where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Baqarah, He subhanahu wa ta'ala says, And lawful for you is the evenings, uh, is your women to have relations with them uh, in the nights that you have fasted. Meaning, during the day when we fast, of course, it is impermissible. This is the mafhum, mafhum of this ayat that we understand from this ayat that uh, during the day it's impermissible but this ayat is showing that it's impermissible 
and the Mufassirin, the, the people who explain uh, the make tafsir, uh, Ahl tafsir, they say, Arafthu huna huwa jima'ah. In this ayat, Arafth, it means sexual relations, jima'ah. So letting us know the understanding from this is that other things are permissible as long as you're not having uh, sexual relations. And these are, uh, and, and then also in addition to this, that the Prophet ﷺ did it in this hadith, that it wasn't something khas nuhum. And Aisha radiallahu anha also said in the hadith that the, uh, that the Prophet ﷺ was the most uh, in control of his uh, desires from amongst you. Ahabati fillah. The Prophet والسلام, was asked, and this is the hadith of uh, Umar ibn Abi Salama, uh, who asked the Prophet وسلم, that he asked the Prophet وسلم, وسلم, so the Prophet والسلام, was asked by Umar ibn Abi Salama and he asked uh, is it the, the person who fast, do they kiss? Or can you kiss a, a fasting person? Can you kiss a fasting person? Or is a, does a fasting person kiss? It depends on the, the tashkil is not there, so I'm not sure if he's referring to the fasting person kissing or being kissed. But the hukum is, is the same. فَقَالَلُهُ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صلى الله عليه وسلم, The Prophet والسلام, said, Ask this one, ask her, meaning ask Um Salama. So this hadith, Ayyu Habitifila, also illustrates for us the permissibility of kissing. Ask her why, because the Prophet والسلام, kissed his wives. And also, Then uh, he said, or then she said, then I, I told him that uh, the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam used to do this. And he said, O Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, قَدْ غَفَرَ اللَّهُ لَكَ مَا تَقَدَّمَ مِنْ ذِنْبِكَ وَمَا تَأَخَرَ Allah has forgiven you for what you have done your, your previous sins and what you might do later. فَقَالَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَمَ The Prophet ﷺ said أَمَّا وَاللَّهِ إِنِّي لِإِتْقَاكُمْ لِلَّهِ وَأَخْشَاكُمْ لَهُ The Prophet ﷺ said uh, By Allah Verily I am the most I have the most taqwa from amongst you and I am the most Fearful of Allah. So, ahabati fillah, that's uh, some of the evidence of showing us that it's permissible to uh, to do that. Now let's get into some of the other messiah which are important for us, so that way we have an understanding about this. Ahabati fillah, we've talked about this on other occasions, and I might as well talk about this now, is that, of course, masturbation is not permissible uh, uh, in Ramadan or outside Ramadan. It's not, it's Muharram in Islam. And masturbation, as some of the ulama say, it breaks your fast because you're not uh, controlling your shahwa. You're not controlling your desires. And the Prophet ﷺ, uh, mentioned in a hadith of Qudsi that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, said, Yad'a shahwatuhu wa aqlahu wa sharbahu min ajli. That the, talking about the fasting and why fasting is for him, subhanahu wa ta'ala and why he rewards it immensely is that the person who fasts that they leave their desires 
and they leave their food and their drink for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the person who masturbates, they are not leaving their desires. They are uh, acting upon their desires because they're even masturbating and they're doing something that they have, uh, they intend to do and they, they are something they could control themselves and not do. However, they're doing that and then the result of that uh, is that they, akramakum Allah, they have orgasm. So, ahabatifillah, that breaks your fast and avoid it. And do your best to stay away from those things that lead to it. Another mas'ala, ahabatifillah, or the same mas'ala that we were dealing with initially, of whether the ruling pertaining to kissing and uh, massaging or petting or what have you, is we said it's permissible. And this is what the dhahir of the hadith shows us. There are other aqwal of the ulama, and we'll quickly go through them as best as we can, uh, and as quickly as we can. One of the aqwal is that with regards to this issue, and this is, is that it's permissible to do those things. For the person who fasts, uh, in general, they can do this. As long as, and here's a condition that this, this group said, as long as the person can, can guarantee and control themselves from falling into having sex, sexual relations, or ejaculating. Because if you do those things, that will break your fast. Akramakum Allah. And amongst those who have this, who have this view is some of the Salaf. salaf Abu Huraira, radiallahu ta'ala anhu, was Sa'ad ibn Abi Waqqas, was Sa'id ibn Jubair, was Akhroon, who was Madhab Imam Abi Hanifa, rahimahullah ta'ala, or radiallahu ta'ala anhu majma'in. Some of the Salaf that held this view, uh, that going with the Zahir of this uh, text, is, and that it's permissible to do this, is uh, Abu Huraira, radiallahu ta'ala anhu, the Sahabi Jalil, Sa'ad ibn Abi Waqqas, radiallahu ta'ala anhu, Sa'id ibn Jubair, and others. And also it is from the madhab of Imam Abu Hanifa, rahmatullahi alayhi. The second uh, uh, opinion with regards to this, ahabati fillah, is that it is actually mustahab to do so, meaning that it is recommended to kiss and pet. However, this is a weak cold, but I just want us to have knowledge about how the fuqaha of this, this beautiful religion, how they looked at some of these messiah. And this is the statement of the Zahiriyah. Ahabatifillah, this is a very weak cold. I want you to know, so don't believe that, not only that it's permissible, but that it's encouraged to kiss and do those things. No, because it, it, it can lead to something. It could be a dangerous thing, but we just want to, for the sake of, of ilm, of looking at these, these messiah ilmiyah, these Masail al-Ilmiyah and, and, and trying to gain a, a tasawwar and, and some understanding just to understand how the fuqaha of this deen how they looked at these issues with taqwa Allah Azza wa Jal and they came up with these hukum uh, and we go with the strongest uh, 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 view bi'idhni Allah Ta'ala so the Zahiriya they're the only ones who say and this is Mubalagh as, as the Sheikh says that they say that it's recommended to actually kiss and to massage and these kind of things going from the, the looking at the hadith because they want to follow the sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam but however Ahabatifillah they're the only ones who state this and this doesn't this hadith does not uh, uh, necessitate that this is something recommended to do uh, another call Ahabatifillah is those who say that it is disliked in general and this is mashhur that they say that it is uh, it is disliked to do this another قول of is the قول بتحرين مطلق there's also a group of the ulama they say it's haram to do this to kiss and to massage while fasting and from them uh, this is نقله uh, ibn Mundhir wa Tahawi on a group, and they didn't mention those ulama that uh, held this view. And they uh, made fatwa 
that is facade, that it yufsid al sawm, that it breaks your fasting. However, Allah, don't worry about this whole because it is it doesn't go in accordance with the adilla, the stronger evidence, which is Vahir al-Hadith uh, and, and the aqwal of those imams and the other ahadith which support uh, is that it's permissible. Okay, but I just want us to get an, an understanding of these Masai. And then there are other aqwal. Another aqwa which is important for us to, uh, uh, to mention and understand is that by kissing and touching uh, is impermissible. Some of the ulama say that it's impermissible for the person whose desires become, who, bec who the person who becomes aroused. If they become aroused, then it's impermissible. The person who cannot guarantee they will not become aroused by this kissing and fondling or what have you, then this person should not, uh, then it's haram for them. And it's uh, so this, and this is one of the aqwal uh, uh, of the Shafi'iyah. Another qawl ahabatifillah is some of the ulama made a, a distinct distinguish between uh, whether someone is uh, old, elderly, or whether they are young. And again, we've already discussed the strongest evidence be in the la ta'ala and that uh, that it is permissible but if you are someone who cannot guarantee your and control yourself then of course you should avoid it this is the tahqiq of the mas'ala bi idn Allah ta'ala another issue that arises a habtifillah is if the person fasting if they uh, if they ejaculate or if they have premature ejaculation due to kissing or uh, uh, touching or by, uh, by looking, by excessive looking. So for example, maybe they're looking at the television, maybe they're looking at the internet, maybe they're looking of course at pornography or whatever, or, or not even at pornography, they're looking at people on the street, the opposite sex or whatever arouses them. And this kethra, not taking one look, is not for Allah. They they saw, uh, you know, because you as human beings we're walking and we have to see the street, and you're going to see one way or another. Or you come down the stairs and you happen to meet a not for Allah, and you lower your gaze. But the person who continually they get that second look, the third look, the fourth look, or what have you, and then it leads. This is already muharram, so this is already taken from ajr, not breaking their fast, but this takes from the ajr of their soul. But what happens if they ejaculate from this, or they uh, have premature ejaculation? This is the the issue that arises. Habitifillah, with regards to this issue, it has a lot of various uh, branches, as they said, taqsimat or tafriat. And with this, uh, one of the things: if a person fasting, if they kiss, or they massage and they, uh, you know, to orgasm. They have an orgasm, whether a male have ejaculating sperm, a kramakumala, or a female uh, having an orgasm, or an orgasm and uh, being sure that she had that a kramakumala. The four imams, the four madahib are on that this person has broken their fast with this. They have broken their fast by either from uh, kissing or massaging or looking that they have broken their fast if they've done this to the state of of uh, of uh, ejaculating of, of having an orgasm. And some of the ulama say there's ijma with this. Ibn Qudama, Sahib Mughni. He said that there is ijma, that there's consensus of the ulama. So again, this is just for the sake of our, our knowledge. Also, Ibn uh, Hubeira and Al-Mawardi, uh, al al who was a Shafi'i, a great Shafi'i scholar. Um, and they also use from this as Dalil, the hadith that we already mentioned, hadith of Qudsi, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Yada shahwatuhu wa aqluhu wa shurbuhu min ajli. Where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that the, uh, he rewards the fasting person because he 
leaves his uh, his desires, his food and his drink for my sake. And the person who has uh, uh, ejaculated full ejaculation, either by uh, kissing or massaging or what have you, then they haven't left their shower because they could have controlled their gaze. They didn't have to look at the internet. They didn't have to look at the uh, television or what have you and look at the uh, those things which are, will arouse them. So they didn't leave their shawa. So from this, they say that there is some other aqwal and Imam al-Albani had another statement with regards to, the, to this issue. But again, we're going to try to deal more with the strongest aqwal in here. And again, as we said, some of the ulama haka ijma on this. Imam Ibn Qudama and other great imams. Those are some of the main things. Uh, another issue, ahabatifillah. If a person kisses or massages and then they prematurely ejaculate. So it's it's not full ejaculation, akramakullah. What's uh, well known from the method of uh, Imam Malik wa, wa Imam Ahmed is that this person, uh, their fast is broken. And they have to... Uh, they have to uh, br uh, make up that day. And uh, Imam Abu Hanifa, Imam Shafi'i, and also in a ruwaya on Imam Ahmed, uh, say that it doesn't uh, that it doesn't break your fast. This premature ejaculation. And this was also the ikhtiyar of Sheikh Al Islam Ibn Taymiyyah. This is also the uh, view of Sheikh Al Islam Ibn Taymiyyah. So, again, we know, we learn from this the danger. But if a person kisses or they uh, massage and they have premature ejaculation, uh, my view, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best, and you can, you know, ask your imams or your sheikh or whoever you trust, my view is I will, will go with the call of Sheikh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah and those other great imams before him, who like Imam Abu Hanifa and Imam Shafi'i and the Rawai of Imam Ahmed that it does not uh, break your fast, the premature ejaculation. But if you completely have an orgasm, then this breaks your fast. So the person in that situation, what should they do? They should wash themselves and make a new wudu. Uh, and also, the with regards to this issue, Another reason is that they said uh, that they go with the asl of this mas'ala وَلَا يُسِحْ قِيَاسُهُ عَلَى الْمِنِي So they, they're saying that they're going with the origin of this issue is that your midi uh, does not break your fast but that if you, uh, you know, having this premature ejaculation so and it's not permissible to make qiyas, they say in this, with sperm with full with fully having an orgasm so akramakum Allah and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best uh, the last issue I want to talk about Allah, is if a person they have uh, they ejaculate have premature ejaculation or they fully ejaculate uh, while they're fasting by looking. So forgive me, I made a mistake earlier when I said, the, when I mixed the issue of looking with, uh, with uh, massaging and with kissing. But this is a different message. Let's see what the, the, the ulama say with regards to this. So when uh, having premature ejaculation and ejaculation due, due to excessive looking, meaning repetitive looking, for example, the person, he's on the street, he's on the block or what have you, and he's looking, and he's looking, watching, as they say, the old song from the, uh, probably the 50s or whatever, watching girls go by, uh, the, I'm a girl watcher, okay, or that this activity, by watching, this is something you could have controlled, and you're fasting. So you didn't leave your shahwa for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
So the fact that this is an activity that can be controlled and the person is doing it, insists on doing it, then in the jamir, أَنَّهُ لَيْسَ عَلَيْهِ شَيْءٍ إِذَا أَمْذِي بِتَكْرَارَ الْنَظَرِ That according to all the imams, that by looking, this looking, even though they uh, had control of the fact that they were looking, the fact that they had premature ejaculation, there isn't anything on them. They just need to, of course, make a new wudu, clean, clean their, their private parts, make a wudu, and keep fasting. Emma ida amna bi tikrar another. But here's the difference. The person who continually looks, but then they fully ejaculate, they have an orgasm. The Hanafiya, Washafi'iya, say that it doesn't break your fast. The Hanafiya, Washafi'iya, say it does not break your fast. I'm not trying to confuse you, and maybe this is not the proper way, but I'm trying to get take some of these Messiah and, and, and go into it. And I don't want to confuse the people. And a lot of times people, they have an imam or a madhab they follow anyhow. But I'm just trying to give you and uh, some tools and some understanding of going into these issues in fiqh and how the depth of a lot of these masail are. And that there's some room in some of the issues, there's some room, there's some leeway. And I will also try to give you the qawla rajih, rajih. The, the, the most authentic call according to what I have studied and according to the ulama that I've sat with what I have uh, what I believe in accordance to the dalil that they've presented us and the, the, the dalil that we have before us so ahabatifillah that's the call of the shafi'iyya and the hanafiyya that the person who uh, ejaculates by excessive looking this does not break their fast but the malikiyya and the hanabila Say that it breaks your fast. And the Shaykh here is saying that this is the most correct view because this is something that the person could have restrained themselves for. They didn't have to keep looking. They could have lowered the gaze. It wasn't impossible. It wasn't a, a super in, a super humane feat. But it was very uh, reasonable that they could have uh, controlled their desires and not looked again. But they kept looking, kept looking, kept looking until they ejaculate. So this is someone who's being not being cautious with their deen. And in fact, they, some of the ulama would say that they're playing with their religion because they're fasting. They, they could have lowered their gaze. Maybe they took one, but to take enough looks to where you ejaculate and you have premature ejaculation, this shows that they're not exhibiting that taqwa. Okay, they're not uh, gaining the benefit of the fasting. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best. And I uh, also hold the view that it breaks your fast uh, according to the, uh, which is the call of the Malikiyah and the Hanabila in this issue. And many of our Mashaykh. Uh, and so the Shahid Ahabit is be careful when you're fasting. Do your best to lower your gaze. Do your best to tuck Allah Azza wa Jal and avoid those things which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has prohibited and benefit from your fasting. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.